Oh, I didn't see you there. Come join me, won't you? Thank you. Uh, today is the 9th of March, 2022. I have my brother, Taras Kmil, on the line. Hi, Taras. Welcome to People. People, this is my brother, Taras. Hello, people. <laughs> I have been doing season two about family and friends that have been really uh, important in my musicianship. And uh, you have been there since my beginning. Uh, we've grown up together, you living in Toronto, me growing up there, um, and I've always had the opportunity to look up to you. Um, and you cast a, quite a large shadow, uh, but that's just one way of looking at it. I've also learned so much from you. Um, I've had the uh, honor of listening to you practice and practice and get better and get better, something that I now use uh, as a touchstone. For example, when uh, someone is singing opera notes or playing a Chopin piece, I'm like, does it sound like Taras? No, no, they're not that good, no. I would uh, like to take this a little opportunity to honor you for your musicianship because although I've uh, done a lot of uh, vocal and um, um, guitar, uh, principally in rock um, and some folk uh, and some metal, you have just like, that is just one little laser in in the space-time continuum. You are a whole constellation of music, um, and rightly so. You correct me and uh, fill any voids here. Uh, you sing opera. Uh, you were a music teacher. You play saxophone, viola, violin. You've dabbled the French horn. You do the upright bass. Um, you sing in English and multiple languages in several styles. Uh, you've participated on stage. You are part of the Canadian Opera Company. You uh, have done some education in Germany um, where you have learned uh, arts in the, uh, in the continental style. Um, it's just absolutely astounding uh, the uh, array of musicianship that, that you encompass. Um, yeah, uh, so Round of applause, everyone, <laughs> for my brother Taras. He's the musician's musician. Oh, thank you. Um, that's, uh, I would say that that's a longer, probably a bit of a longer mm, highlight list than, than I deserve. I think in a lot of those cases, the instruments that I played, I, I did play play them, some of them for a very short period of time. You know, I was a music, I was a music teacher for a beginner band for, I can't even remember how long it was, maybe it was three months. Um, and so, you know, I didn't play those instruments for very long. Um, really just enough to be able to teach kids where to put their fingers to, to, to try and make some squeaks and squawks. Uh, but, you know, I can't, I can't accept the, the level of flattery that you just bestowed, I mean... I have fond memories of you playing Royal Conservatory music whilst I played Lego on, on the back there. And you played loud enough that it wasn't interfering with your practice. Um, I remember when you were competing with Rebecca Black. You were playing um, a certain piece, but you would go up... Uh, 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 you would go uh, into a certain key and that's got like more of the raised black keys and then she would kind of one-up you by doing another one and then you would do another one so it just got more and more complicated with your finger practice that i think there was the year when saint almost fire came out oh when david foster that's what it was saint almost fire is what everybody everybody who knew even the littlest about the piano wanted to play that left hand Yep, yep. Right, that, and so, you know, anybody that walked into the music room rushed to the piano to go and try a little left hand pattern. And, um, yeah, when it came to music, I was so, in elementary school, I was so tired of coming in second place to, to everyone. 
um, that when it came to the music room, I, I wanted to be the top dog. Uh, I also remember us growing up, uh, you would uh, like sing along with every single song that came out on the radio in the 80s and 90s because you knew all the lyrics. You would hear it two, three times. Uh, us belonging to Ukrainian Boy Scouts, um, they even re remarked, they would say, uh, your brother knows every single line to every single song that comes on through this radio. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, that that's pretty much normal for him. And you know what? I'm doing the same thing these days because I'm working and in the common room where people are having their foods or, or you know, giving out meds and whatnot, it's, it's, it hits from the 80s and 90s. And I know like every single line and the security guards are just like, <laughs> <laughs> giving me this look of wonderment. I'm like, it's it's a blessing and a curse, right? Um, so there, there was a set, Adrian, a set of um, of radios that came out when you know in the '80s. So they were these kind of these boxes with these cool little speakers that would detach, right? So you and I shared a bedroom for you know many years, and when it came time for me to do homework, I had one of these radios, uh, these these little, whatever. You're the silver, I remember. Or, that's right, right. So, so that, you know, back in that in that time, my friends and I would listen to the same radio station. It would be something that we would all have in common, right? And so, you know, Brian Adams became popular, and Madonna, and Corey Hart, and. Right, like Platinum Blonde and Duran Duran, and mm -hmm. all of those. And British New Wave, Erasure, right? Yep. So, so you too. that was on constantly, however many hours of homework I had. I don't remember how many, even if it wasn't a lot. Like, I would turn that radio on a bit in the morning. I would turn it on definitely when it was homework time. And so all of those songs over and over again, over and over again, right? Yeah. Growing up, I also have another fond memory I want to sneak in here where um, uh, I have to ask you, how many times does the, the main theme from the Beastmaster enter your head? <laughs> extremely, extremely <laughs> seldom. I tried to watch that again with my wife. Yes. Um, we did not. We did not get very far. Uh, it was just that uh, movie. It's pretty terrible. Pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Including, I think. It, I think they painted. Uh, they painted a leopard or a tiger. They, they wanted a black tiger, and I think they took an orange tiger and painted them black. Something like that. It was just brutal. Yeah, yeah. It's a silly movie, but it has a very lush score. Um, and as kids, we were all influenced with that. And uh, it's fond every once in a while. I'll be walking down the halls at work, and all of a sudden, that French horn comes in. Uh, <laughs> it's just... We just kind of soaked it up like sponges, right? For sure. Yeah. And uh, uh, while we were driving in the vehicle, too, uh, we learned how to sing, how to harmonize. Uh, Mama and Tato did that deliberately so that we could use our ears and you could find harmonies. Um, our dad, uh, you know, he would cover a certain range, I would cover a certain range, you would do anything that you wanted, just in interwoven. Uh, uh, Larissa and Mom would do the, the lady part. And um, yeah, we had a lot of time to practice because going to Detroit and back to visit uh, our dad's parents um, gave us a lot of ample time to go through whole albums. And I have to be careful uh, because every once in a while I'll be curious, like, oh, I want to hear this song. It's been such a long time. And then I'm thinking, ooh, if I do, then it's going to be stuck in my head for ages. Um, and it's, you know, very well written material, like Barry Manilow. Fantastic. I, I really want to hear uh, just one voice singing in the darkness. And I know that if I do, and I listen to the whole thing, like I have recently with Larry Gatlin and the Gatlin Brothers, it's going to be in my head for days. Oh, um, something that also, because I've been listening to you practice, as well as having to do my practicing and whatnot, and our dad uh, playing records and uh, recording them, all the more reason that I like to 
uh, start to explore uh, other genres that I really like, just to kind of clear out the earworms uh, and create my own music. And it's kind of hard because I'll be writing and I'll be, you know, pr uh, trying to lay down tracks or recording things on my iPhone and uh, all of a sudden it's just like, oh, this sounds like such and such, or it sounds like this mixed in with this. And I'm just like oh, trying to stop myself from thinking in those lines and trying to, you know, focus on what I'm trying to create. And if it's got a little homage to a certain band, then, I, you know, I can let it slide. If it's good, it's good. Well, it's your art. In the end, it's your art. I used to be stopped a long time ago by... Uh, I've said this to a few people over the years that when I was studying music in university, uh, I was, you know, I had the intention of becoming a film composer. I didn't really think about it or dream of it. I just oh. made something. I made, I made something up. Like, um, how could I, how could I have a career in music? I, I was interested in composing, and I had composed some things in in a high school, but I was more of a spontaneous composer, and. Um, and so I thought, you know, I'll go to university and I'll, you know, I'll learn orchestration and I'll, I'll do all that. Um, and, you know, part of my homework at university musicology courses was to go listen to this composer, that composer. And my, my favorite was romantic and post-romantic music. And, you know, then I went and I went and I listened to the piano, the Rachmaninoff piano concertos, and I listened to Scriabin, and I was like, um, like, those guys wrote everything that I would have wanted to write, like, it's over. It it's already out there, and it's been out there for 80 years already. So, too bad. So sad. But you know, like in in the days when I was in high school and I was kind of trying to trying my hand at pop songs, I couldn't. I couldn't escape the fact that all my songs, to me, sounded like all the other songs, and I really let that get in my way. Mm. Um, uh, for me now, looking back, the fact of the matter is, is you know, if you have the creative urge, you know, it's worth your time on earth to to make art. And if it happens to resemble to you one person out of billions, if it happens to resemble another piece of art, then okay, one perspective out of seven billion, but it doesn't shouldn't disqualify, you know, your you know the manifestation of your energy, your soul, your brain, you know, the, your life events and all that stuff. I mean, it's a unique piece of art, any mm. which way you look at it. Uh, one of our vocal heroes, uh, I, I, I guess I assume that he is a vocal hero of yours, uh, Bono. Uh, has a line in Achtung Baby, uh, every poet is a cannibal, every artist is a thief. Mm. And, um... Um, there was also an, another artist, a visual artist. He's the guy that did all the Campbell soups and the Marilyn Monroe's. Uh, he said that art is anything that you can get away with. So, uh, if if they can make it really, really big, uh, I kind of take uh, some of the things that I hear myself create with a little pinch of salt. Uh, I could also say that I am the person that is creating this music, and if I arrange it in a particular way, then uh, I think I have the license to be able to continue to create. Uh, in fact, there are some bits where I sound like, oh, a little, this sounds like a little Radiohead bit. And then I listen to the actual Radiohead thing that reminds me of what I'm playing, and it sounds different, and it's in a completely different key, and they have the, the other different sounds, and I'm just like, oh, okay, then it's just in my head. I shouldn't be so judgmental yeah. and harsh on myself. Yeah. I should uh, be free to explore, because who knows where this is going to lead. I might even end up changing or throwing out the idea, uh, and I, I don't suffer as a result. It's just something that uh, I uh, shouldn't uh, stop myself from trying. Yeah, if my critic was my roommate, I would have evicted him. Yeah, Long ago. that's a very good way of putting it. Uh, we developed ears. Um, do you have the same curse? I'm pretty sure you do. Maybe it's even worse than mine. I hear a song like three times on a radio, and it's just like, oh, I'm sick of the song. It's just going through my head. Um, yeah, uh, there are a lot of songs that I wish had a little bit more tickle. Is what I would call it, and you know, it's always a choice to. Uh, 
that's just my own snobbery, though. You know, like I grew up playing classical music, and so you know that most of that stuff, playing, learning the piano, didn't have lyrics. You know, so my ear was more attuned to the stuff that eventually is found underneath the singer's line. Mm. Um, and when I find, you know, when I when I hear songs that that repeat a very a very predictable pattern, which is really what makes pop music so popular, is the familiarity. Um, you know, it, it reminds people of. Uh, it doesn't create tension for people. It creates relaxation, a uh, feeling of familiarity. But for me, you know, I a lot of times I seek songs that have a little more tickle, that maybe just aren't quite run of the mill. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, and it, and it means that I don't get to. I find that I don't enjoy as much music as as a lot of people do. I find myself like I can hear myself criticizing far more than enjoying or grooving. Mm. So yeah, it's a curse to some degree. Well said. Uh, our father is always impressed. You excelled way past him. Um, and you've said the same thing about my guitarmanship and how I've been playing. And I've uh, gone past him. I haven't even thought about that. Because uh, our dad played both um, uh, piano and guitar. And he sings opera. And uh, we've uh, outpaced him considerably. I hadn't even realized it until you pointed it out a while back. And uh, I think he's proud of that. I, I look at the stuff that you're up to and I really... You know, I really marvel at the direct and like how far you've gone with guitar. I think you veered off into guitar studies at an early age when, you know, when piano was kind of my bag. And um, I, I don't know where you, where you, where you found the focus to practice as much as you do. I think you just find it a joy. And so you yeah, ended up spending a, just a enough time to find mastery, to find the ability to be able to create what's in your mind. I've known you to be an extraordinarily creative person, and so, you know, it doesn't shock me when I see the stuff that you come up with, but, um, you know, you're an incredible musician and vocalist and um, a lyricist and creator as well. Thank you. I mean, you're far more creative um, and individualistic than I am. You know, I, I still, you know, I perform and I, and I operate in more traditional musical fields, and I feel like you're your own galaxy. <laughs> oh, thanks. Space Cadet for sure. I'm creating sounds uh, using guitars and such that is still kind of new in the whole idea of creating music, whereas you are performing pieces that have been around for, oh, uh, you know, sometimes hundreds of years. Um, you, I guess, have a certain standard, and there's a lot of coaching that you've gone to, vocal coaching. Uh, do you want to tell me some about that? Do you continue doing those New York trips and, and going to Europe and such? Yeah, less trips. I did, I did go to Europe, and I did go to New York frequently, and, in the, and, and to programs in Canada and the States, um, seeking sort of vocal pedagogy. Um, I pretty religiously stick to the teaching of Dr. Michael Warren in New York. Um, you know, I really respect his, uh, his approach and uh, kind of the way he teaches and what he teaches. It's been very successful for my, for my singing. Um, I'm very pleased with sort of what I can do, how I sing. As far as kind of performing uh, prepared music or music of like that has been around for centuries I guess you know I, in one sense I, I guess I, I'm an enhancer um, you know if, if no then that's one of the reasons why I did Rigoletto why, why sort of I, I, I put that production on um, if nobody steps forward to say this shall exist like this performance shall exist then you know it just it doesn't it doesn't get performed. It's 200 years old, and it consistently needs somebody to say yes. We're gonna sing this again somewhere.
right? So in that sense, I, I get to be, I get to be a repeater, but you know, I get there's a there's a great enjoyment that I get out of performing music that I that I hear other people, other vocalists that I revere perform. You know, I don't know if it's the same as an athletic competition, but you know, when you see somebody slam dunk basketball and you know that you can slam dunk basketball, I haven't I haven't dunked enough to to just see somebody do it and feel like I don't need to. When I hear somebody sing you know, opera, I, I want to turn it down and sing it myself. Um, you know, and then with that short little urge quelled, you know, I'll turn it back up and I'll listen to them sing some more and I'll admire them and I'll admire them and then I'll be like, whoa, they just did that. And then I'll turn it down and be like, I got to try that. Yeah, <laughs> I do something similar in the car too, only not opera. Yeah, well, I mean, oh, I do that to, I do that to pop music all the time. Um, you know, I still do, it's uh, old songs that I've done it to for years, and new songs that I hear as well. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm constantly, I'm just constantly wanting to slam dunk. You uh, want to create. You want to uh, play these things because you can. And we all have a, a short time on this world, so um, that is, I guess, very fundamental to your creativeness, uh, creativity. Yeah, I'm, I'm inspired to express myself. I'm inspired to, like, when I hear music that inspires me, um, then I want to I wanna, wanna join, I want to add, I want to enhance, or um, flavor it sometimes hmm. even more. And I don't, always, I, don't, I don't always choose to, but, you know, I started studying and music and playing the piano a, a very long time ago and as you said you know music was always around in our house and we were always singing i mean the game that i used to play was never end up on the same note when we were harm like just trying to find harmonies never end up on the same note as anyone else and like that was in my mind that was the game make it sound great and whatever you're singing see if you can make it into a completely independent line that would have merit on its own like that could serve as a its own melody if nobody knew which melody was the true one and at the end of the phrase don't end up on the same note as anybody else mm. and you know i somehow that that little mental exercise has never it's never abandoned me it, it always sounded fantastic from all the memories and times that we've had to sing Noelita or Salt for the Hospital. Um, it was wonderful. Even going to Mass uh, as, as early kids and having to sight read music and then eventually just having the Mass in front of us and participating in, from the pews. Trying very hard not to crack up in church. Uh, even with Larissa participating with that and us getting hushed tones at us and, and mum uh, kind of from from the sides admonishing us but it was something about church laughter that's just really 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 funny ultra funny um <clears throat> speaking of uh, old style older style music i have been sight reading uh, the oxford book of english madrigals and there are like oh about 80 songs in here a lot of them say fa la 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 um, and uh, there's two of them, The Silver Swan and I April is in My Mistress Face by Connolly or Donnelly or whatnot. And I practiced with them in an Anglican church with one of my lab technicians and she had broken her wrist and so she's practicing with her left hand and her right hand. And I'm able to sing and with this uh, um, program, uh, GarageBand, on my iPad, I'm able to record all four parts. Five parts with uh, Silver Swan and it's fun. And uh, I guess I could figure out the notes. It's it's simple enough because it's you know sixteenth notes maximum, um, and the harmony comes out when I have all four or five tracks together. It sounds really beautiful. So the reward is there. It makes me want to, but I don't want to have to figure out what the notes are. I much rather have her play the notes and then me practice the two, three, or four bars, whatever the phrase may be. Uh, it's just like, just like church. Um, that, that one little 
aspect of technicality of even look I have a keyboard in the back there um, it even shows me what note I'm playing on a staff it's uh, LED and whatnot and uh, I could sit down and figure it out but it's just not fun. I'd much rather have someone just say, okay, this is how it goes, da 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 and then me sing it, yeah. da 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 and then me having it stuck in my head, come a week later, uh, sit down and record, uh, phrase by phrase. And it's really fun as an exercise. Uh, it's helped me to sight read, to um, get clear tones, to focus on timing and breath work. Uh, so many things as uh, you and I take for granted as being vocalists, and yet uh, I haven't done it in any well, period of time uh, since I've been moving around and working, working, working across uh, Canada. Uh, but I'm rediscovering and finding a new appreciation. <clears throat> that kind of road learning is is um, is pretty is fairly natural. It really leverages the human ability to mimic. Um, and it's often successful for people while they're not concentrating. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but you know, Papa used to sit and arrange. Um, he used to arrange Ukrainian music for his right for the men's choir, the male choir. Yeah. Right? But but there were a lot of people in that choir that did not read music. So oh. he would arrange or or more parts and then he would sit with a tape recorder and he would record himself singing each of those parts and then dub those tapes and then hand them to choir members so that they could play it at home and sing along and learn their parts really i did not know this i'm gonna be asking him these sorts of questions when i see him down in, in uh, florida if i'm not mistaken pun was one of the beneficiaries of that effort Okay. Wow. Because I know he had done some recordings. Uh, he had mentioned on the interview that he and I have done um, how he, back in like the late 60s, had a reel-to-reel -reel and he did a Ukrainian piece where he was... Uh, incidentally, there's a beautiful photo uh, I have to post up, I hope you don't mind, of uh, you as a baby in a crib listening to a reel-to-reel. -reel. Yeah, uh, our dad uh, had done reel-to-reel -reel work um, and was dubbing at with that technology back in like the late 60s early 70s and then like that's that's incredible i didn't realize that he continued to do that um for the men's choir and that makes so much sense because if you are not able to read music as some people you know or, or me for that need to you know brush up on it if that goes a long distance and i guess that really helped us with the success of uh, our dad being uh, the conductor and uh, being the lead uh, for all the men to be able to do those big Christmas pageants and uh, uh, having, uh, was it Verkhovena, uh, the ladies choir that would also come in practice? I remember uh, he would have them come in yeah, and... I can't remember if that was the name, but I think it sounds right. I think that's right. Uh, um, and they would come and practice. I remember being a little kid and uh, hurting my heel and then being under the table crying and they came on in and they said hello and yeah so having guests over being social music uh, has really been able to connect people um, I've seen you in different costumes I've seen you up on stage uh, in several places and you still play um, you still continue to do music uh, you've done Rigoletto, for example, at the uh, in an art studio once. You were not only the leading role, but you're also the lead organizer and got everyone involved. Um, so you've done productions. You are still singing part of the Canadian Opera Company. What's your connection with that? And do you have plans for the future? Yeah, I mean, I continue to sing in the Canadian Opera Company course. It's been, I don't know, 11 or 12 years now, so the time really, time really flies. I've been, you know very, very fortunate to be part of uh, so many of their productions. Uh, most of the time in the chorus here and there, I, I get a small part. Um, and, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what the future holds there, although it's definitely my intention to continue to sing with them. I sang with them in their digital video recording of Madame Butterfly just in January. Mm. I sang with them for their digital video recording um, of their in winter concert in uh, uh, recorded in October and Mozart's Requiem. Um, I'm 
you know, and I, I definitely hope to return uh, either next year, whether it be fall, winter, spring. We're going to have a baby, and so you know that's going to it's going to take up uh, quite a lot of energy and availability in the short term. Uh, but you know, I expect to continue with them. It's a, I mean, it's a great job, really great job. You've also done Massey Hall, right? You've played there. I have sung and played in Massey Hall, but that was. Uh, a number of years ago. Well, that's okay. It's uh, something for me to have to shoot for. Mum did Massey yeah, Hall too, and okay. uh, uh, yeah. Hmm. I have to. I have to consider that. <laughs> so we only did it as part of ensembles, which isn't like an. That's not really an, an only. Um, I think we all performed as part of ensembles. Um, so you know, there's lots of time for you to to get yourself a gig at Massey Hall. If I get this concert theater play off the ground and able to produce it, like and record it and begin to to tour, then yes, Massey Hall should be on the list. It's a worthy, worthy goal. Yep, yep, yep. And then the Juno, but you know that there's a few things to consider first. Um, yeah, a couple years away. <laughs> how time flies. Uh, uh, but I might be getting ahead of myself. Um, you've had such a varied career. You are amazing at uh, so many musical endeavors that you are, have. Um, maybe it's time for a rest. Um, what's the plan for the future? How's the next generation going to uh, become musical? Do you have a, a, some thoughts about that? Yeah, so we sing a lot in, in our house. Yeah, Oscar um, sings. There's some, sort of, there's some sort of music. Oscar, I don't know, he sings to himself a lot. He likes um, three or four songs, and, and he just sings them over. Hickory Dickory Dock was like in our house for four months nonstop. Um, loves, loves, loves that song. But he only likes to get to six, um, although he can count far past that. Um, you know, Denise and I play guitar, uh, and, uh, you know, we haven't played guitar in a little bit, but, you know, that'll get restored. Um... Well, if it's going to be anything like us, if it's going to be anything like us with the guitar under the couch that we would pull out and strum, maybe that'll be worthwhile for him. Yeah, he Oscar does have a little guitar that he does drag around and strum to. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay, it's good. Still going to be a big part here in the coming years. Well, you're keeping the music alive, and I, I'm very happy to hear that. Um, whatever you uh, want to do for the future, uh, you know, I give blessings. Um, I hope uh, you d never lose that spark for wanting to add and create and uh, shape and to improve the music that we hear. Uh, I know it's important for you. Uh, I think it's important for pretty much everybody. They just, a lot of people don't realize it. Before I forget, you were also singing opera for Scott Thompson, one of the comedians of um, Kids in the Hall. I've tried to YouTube that and have not been able to find it. It is so good. It is so good. And, and with that, I'm going to say goodbye. So thank you very much for participating with the video. I can just say thank you very much for taking the opportunity to um, uh, describe your musicianship and uh, uh, how you've seen me uh, play mine. Uh, thank you for all the compliments, too. Um, Thanks for participating in this uh, meeting so that uh, we'd be able to um, further my video series here about musicianship and uh, what I like to do. Thanks, I'm happy to contribute. It was great talking to you, seeing you, reminiscing. Um, you know, blessings to you too. Talk to you soon. Yeah, love you. Bye. Love you too. Bye-bye.